Hello there. Hi, everybody. Ah, look at her. She's so pretty. Oh, so are you. Oh, obviously. I'm, I made an effort. <laughs> Which <laughs> doesn't happen quite often, but today I did. Just for you. Oh. Shucks. <laughs> Shucks. <laughs> um, do you want to introduce our wonderful podcast? I can do that. Hi, everyone. Welcome to all the films we judged before. I'm Katie. That over there is the magnificent Lily Kay. Ah, thank you. That's the beautiful Katie. Uh, let's not forget that on, on the other... Ah, oh, shit. I never know which side are you on. You, you're... I, you should be pointing that way for me. There you go. The yeah. other way. No, no. You are on this side for me. No, yeah, you're on the other side. I'm on the other side of you for me. Look at my finger. It's so long. What the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> anyway. <laughs> um, what have you been watching lately, my dear? Oh, what have I been watching lately? Have I been watching very much right, recently? Um, hmm. Very interesting, yes. Oh my yes. God, I don't know if I did. I mean, the, <laughs> we talked a little bit about that. I think we'll, we'll talk about this properly in a minute. Because yeah. uh, that was the last like full thing that I watched. You know, I did go back and I watched a couple more episodes of, 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 of Netboy Calflex. <laughs> How long did you survive? <laughs> I mean, okay, so one of them was still like I read a really interesting article recently from Vice about um the the dialogue in the show mm. and how basically it sounds like that because it's the kind of like Whedon esque version of dialogue where people talk in quippy one liners as opposed to opposed to actually talking like real people. Mm. And then after after I read that and I went back and watched because I watched episode five, I was like, Oh, you're right. That's exactly what this is. Everybody's trying to sound like they're in a TV show. And nobody yeah, sounds yeah. like a person. Um, and it almost made it watching it a little bit more bearable because I could see what they were trying to do. But it wasn't, it's still very good. <laughs> hmm. But I will say that the episode six wasn't terrible, which is not a great indictment still, but like it was better than some of the other ones that came before it. It was like, structurally a bit better to put together it was more interesting the way they took one of the old episodes and turned it into something new okay it was like it was the it was the dr laundress okay sort of, with all the the, mm. the you know the brain fuzz and all that sort mm. of stuff mm. but they did it they kind of changed it up in a really interesting way and i was like all right this is kind of cool and then my, a friend of mine told me that the next episode goes back to being bad so i didn't watch any of that. oh god <laughs> Yeah, I still haven't watched a single episode of it, I'm not gonna lie. I, just, I mean, I don't know. Just can't be bothered at this point. Like, you know, you're telling me it's bad. I've read a lot of people telling me it's bad and I'm like... It's just not good. It's just yeah. the thing, it's just not good. Although well, I, I will say that... Um, uh, was it Stephanie? I think it was Stephanie over at Couchsoup that uh, wrote an article about it. And I think it was Stephanie. And she liked it? No, yeah, like... a lot of people. There's there's a there's a weird dichotomy in people where they either fucking hate it, or there's a bunch of people who are like, "What are you talking about? It's stupid, like rompy fun." And I'm like, "But it's bad." <laughs> <laughs> and she's a fan of the original one. That's yeah, why no, I was I like, know, "There's some people who who did like it," and I was, mm. I just I'm like, I don't know. There's there's some I've. I desperately tried to put this into words properly mm. and I and I don't know how to do it without making it seem like very much a me thing. Okay. But there's some stuff, there's some like integration of some more adult stuff within episode three, which is the episode that really turned me off to the whole thing. Yes. That I just didn't like at all. And I get, um, uh, there's the, the, the uh, yeah, all right, we're going to go into this a little bit more. At one point they end up in a BDSM club basically. Mm. And it's just the fact that, okay, and actually I was t talking to um, my, my best friends about this and um, my friend Charlotte put this in a way that actually I think is the reason for it. It's not, it's all played for laughs, but it's not funny. And therefore it just uh, feels really uncomfortable. Uh -huh. And that that into the idea that like you're adding, there's like an element of Spike in it where he's like really weirdly into all of it. And I'm not like, People like whatever they like, but it's just like <laughs> it's just a character thing that doesn't it doesn't it's not in the original. Yeah, 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 yeah. And it really fucked with my understanding of who he was as a person. Yeah, and it's like this isn't no, 
And yeah. in, especially in the, the way that you frame this, it feels wrong and bad. And I'm not saying that, that uh, those things are wrong and bad. I'm just saying that they, it, within the context of the show and the sort of representation of the character, it feels like you've gotten the character that I really like really wrong. Yeah. 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 Just didn't like it. <laughs> Makes me so angry. I don't know. I really want to watch John Cho being Spike, but uh, at the same time. No. It doesn't have a lot, a lot of great um, dialogue to work with. But it's part of the reason why actually I liked the episode six that we got, because it basically plays out like a sort of time loop thing, where the idea is that instead of being like, instead of just killing the people, mm. it kind of takes, it, it, it wants, it's a, it's a rogue AI that is basically trying to make him give up his emotional connection so within the show it's him meeting julia again and him basically over and over refusing to let her go yeah and it means that you get more of that kind of like oh this is actually kind of interesting and in that you get an idea of this version of spike and and the sort of sadness that's within him and all mm. that sort of stuff and john cho does play it very well there's bits of it outside of that that i get a bit frustrated with like the idea that um I think would be so excited to save his life, mm. like outwardly happy, because she's never like that in the show. <laughs> the whole point with the, in, in the anime, everybody, they're all just sort of like really existing in the same place. The only person that seems to actively care about everybody else is Jet. Yeah. And he does it in a way that's like, well, fuck you. Why? <laughs> <laughs> yep. <laughs> kind of um, thing. So it's a bit, yeah. It's just, it's not great. I'm not happy. Not happy. Oh, um, yeah. Yeah. Maybe at one point, if I am really, really it, bored. Yeah, I was going to say, it's definitely <laughs> something to just sort of, if you just were to stick it on in the background whilst you were doing your drawing. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I like mean, that's be... probably what's going to happen, uh, to be honest. Just, just dead and curious. Like I said, the first two episodes are pretty decent. And then I just really hated the third episode. And then I think that, that, sort of negative gene boiled over into the next episode and I haven't really been able to like go of it since. Because I think if it wasn't for that third episode, I would have been like, it's just fine. It's a bit stupid and some of the dialogue is bad, but it's like, eh. Yeah. yeah. Oh, well, it is what it is. It can be all perfect and... Oh, no. Just uh, watch the original album. Of it. <laughs> yes, just watch the original. It's up on Netflix as well, so... It is also on Netflix and it is really good. It is very good. The original is just chef's kiss i found a, a good a great little article recently i can't remember i think it was polygon that put it up it was like it was like polygon or it was like comicbook.com i can't remember exactly but mm -hmm. it got um steve bloom and uh wendy and um Bo all together and asked them what their favorite episodes were and and it was also the woman who did the voice of edward whose name i can't remember off the top of my head now but basically everybody but wendy mentioned mushroom samba mm. which is it it's really good choice. <laughs> Wendy mm. said, "Speak like a child," which is my one of my other favorite episodes, actually. Which is yeah, the episode, yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. Oh man, that's a good episode. I think that's the first episode when I was watching it where I went, "Oh fuck!" <laughs> <laughs> oh, the emotions! <laughs> like it wiped me out. It was so good. Fair, completely fair. Um. What else? I don't really think I've been watching anything. When was the last time we did this? Last week? Yeah, but like when last week? I'm trying to like... Oh, on Wednesday. It... I think we did it almost the same time as we did it. Oh no, because I watched Lost in Space. Yes, yeah, so we did it a bit earlier. It was Wednesday, that's right. Yeah. I don't think I watched anything really this week. Hmm. Oh, I went and saw Good Will Hunting. Oh yeah, that you was saw the thing that Good happened Will this Hunting. Week. There you oh, go. I still, like, my time is like... Um, it's just it's non-existent anymore right actually yes that means i can talk about what happened at the screening because yes you can Lord. um yeah so oh that got that must have been like a week ago though mm -hmm. did i look at so bizarre anyway yeah i saw um uh, yeah, I saw, I saw, no, I'm sorry, I'm, the timeline in my head is really confusing me, which is why I'm like, I'm like <laughs> the, hang on a second, we definitely did an episode after that, did I not talk about this then? No, we didn't. I talked about it with you. You, you, you talked about it with me, yes, but not on the podcast, so That's you can so go bizarre. ahead. Any, anyway, so <laughs> I saw, I took my brother to go see a screening of, sure we didn't talk about this? 100%. 
I promise you we didn't. That's so bizarre. Sorry. I, have, I just have such <laughs> having such a sort of like, wait, hang on. Okay, the, yeah. Apparently the week just went a by in my head. Oh, you know why I haven't really been watching anything? It's because I did a bunch of work last week. I went oh, yeah, on like two massive drives up to like where Heathrow and then I did one to South London. You watched uh, Good Will Hunting on the 29th of November. Yeah, which is before we did our episode last week, which is why I'm like, did, did I... Did, did I we talk about it on the podcast? I don't remember. Shit. This is why I'm losing my mind, Anthony. <laughs> <laughs> oh, shit. Yeah, you did watch it before we yeah. recorded it. Oh, did we talk about it? I have a feeling we talked about it, which is why I'm getting all like... I think, oh, maybe with the-, the past week feels like it's just fallen into like it's a just- vortex and I don't remember any of it. <laughs> yeah, I, I have no idea if we talked about it. I, we definitely talked on, on uh, um, we, yeah, Discord. We talked yeah, yeah, yeah. about it. I remember doing that. I just don't remember if we talked about it. Yeah. Hell. I don't know. Well, the thing is, the thing I've been doing for the last week, because um, I went for, I did a bunch of work on Friday and Thursday. Yes. Where I drove up to, to, to do some stuff. I did adventure driving. And then on Friday, Final Fantasy Endwalker came out. So I was trying to play that and slightly failing because the queues have been fucking mad. <laughs> I've been only getting like, to play for like a few hours and then I get tired and I'm like, I can't play now. But I have to force myself into playing for a bit because I'm like, I've been in this queue for two and a half hours. I have to play some. <laughs> um, so I don't really, I haven't really watched anything Really, other than I've been playing, I've been playing M Walk and I've been playing Disco Elysium. And yeah, that's been it. And then Strictly on Saturdays, it's very important. I watched, well, technically I watched them on Sundays because we play DD on Saturdays. Um, I don't think. Brain's gone mad, Lily. This week is just, it doesn't exist in my brain, apparently. <laughs> I don't know. You talk. I... What have you been watching? <laughs> You well, know what? It's okay. <laughs> it's okay. Uh, well, I know that I binge watched uh, Camp Cretaceous, which I didn't talk about. Oh, yeah. Uh, which was uh, very interesting. Let's put it this way. Because. Interesting good? Or interesting bad? It's an in between. Oh, no. <laughs> yep. I was. Uh, I Look. Basically. They are saying that this season of Camp Cretaceous is canon to Dominion, which is coming out next year. Okay. And they introduced a few things in this that I don't want to see in Jurassic World. (laughs) Okay. (laughs) I can, you know, that's the nicest way I can say it. Like, you know, obviously, since there's cloning and everything, we can assume that, uh, well, it plays ahead of us so it's not playing in 2022 or 2021 or whatever uh, the movies came out it it plays in the future not far ahead future but in the future and uh, therefore uh, we can assume that we have cloning so we can have other very advanced technology as well right okay but they fucking introduced uh Almost AI robots in this one, uh, robot dogs and robot uh, breads so you... and whatnot. And uh... okay, <laughs> so you're not into the idea of them introducing robots into into the <laughs> new Jurassic World, then, huh? No. <laughs> Look, hybrids were enough because it was still messing with the dinos, basically. But in this one, uh, they introduced Man- Manticorp, <laughs> which is. Uh, the yes. enemy company. Uh, uh, to, oh, it's a to... company. Okay, my brain was like, yes, like head of a lion. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, of, a, of an eagle. Yeah, I can't remember yes. exactly how, how a manticore is put together. Now it's got. <laughs> it's it, it's complex. It was in one of the episodes. Oh, a lot of them. M- M- Lynn, uh, by the way, uh, but uh, I yes. just think of it as a D and D spell. <laughs> there you go. Uh, but it's it's uh, basically it's it's the rival uh, the company. Uh, against Ingen and you know if you remember the first Jurassic Park they tried to steal uh, 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 through Nedry uh, uh, you know uh, so they can take up the fight against Ingen and they are this is basically what they are doing here as well but they have like a separate island to themselves okay. uh, that has uh, uh, biomes, which I don't mind because I think it's it's a good idea. Like you know, there's a jungle biome and then a, a real a, quick. 
It has the head of a human, the body of a lion, and the tail of and, and of, of a venomous spine similar to porcupine scales. While the other two oh, okay. oh, okay. tail of a scorpion. So some some have as one, some have as another. That that that's what it was in in Merlin as well. Yes, um, it was very disgusting. <laughs> Yeah, they, I mean, any kind of chimera type uh, creature is a bit sort of like, all right. <laughs> yes, uh, yes. Um, but uh, so so basically, they introduced all this new stuff. I didn't have a problem with the biomes and the separate island for for this company and whatnot. But it felt like that the robots t- took over the show instead of the dinos, okay. even though we are watching this for the dinos let's be honest like it's it's the main point of of the jurassic franchise um it's called jurassic for a reason yes uh and you know there were i will say that there were some very interesting parts in it where they used drones uh to control the animals like you know they they were shocked if they moved out of the of the drone uh circle so so they could move them uh to different directions with them basically which was you know it's not an unimaginable thing um but uh, but the robots that were freaking supposed to be scarier than a fucking t-rex coming at you or a spinosaurus or whatnot uh, it felt like that they once again put the dinos into secondary place and i was like it it doesn't it doesn't work no ideal it's not it's not ideal i did love uh the character development uh they put into those uh, kids like you know they they okay. are all changing they introduce ptsd uh with them like you know how they are dealing with how much Being they attacked survived by gigantic dogs. yes <laughs> yeah fair enough <laughs> and they did it in a very very good way like it, it was it was very beautifully represented and and i love that they actually talked about it because according to the series they've been living with freaking dinos for six months now so obviously if would leave a mark. Hey man, uh, trauma. Trauma. It's, it's big. It, you can bring to they. They can deal with a lot of stuff, but they 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 need help. They need. They definitely need. You know, they introduced nightmares and whatnot, and 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 it, it that was very good. I I very much appreciated that. But they ended it on on, on a cliffhanger, which means that there's like going to be one a more season. I feel that, like I read. Yeah, one one mm-hmm. more season. Yeah, and the cliffhanger was was too good and i was like ah fuck <laughs> so <laughs> it did piss me off but this was definitely the weakest season that they did um and uh, I, w- I was a bit pissed off with them but at the same time i know that this leads to further things in in the movie as well like you know not everything is canon in it um you know we never heard about the kids or kids uh, gone missing uh through this uh camp uh back at jurassic world or whatnot or there was not not even a mention in the movies or a little easter egg that was pointing at them uh but uh you know i'm guessing they are taking over stuff from here and uh from the pictures that total flame just brought down for dominion the, the new pictures it's um it's very interesting. I can see some similarities um, to what we already seen in this series. I'm, just, I'm trying to remember if I this is my copy of Empire for this month. I'm like, I don't think they've mentioned anything to do with the Jurassic movies in a while. It was, it, like... um, it was definitely in in uh, this month's uh, Total Film. Uh, yeah, but Total Film and Empire, they're two different entities. <laughs> yeah, that's true. But, uh, I don't yeah. think they've mentioned anything to do with the... the Maybe they'll do it next month. Who knows? Maybe. Yeah. It's coming <laughs> Thank up. Thank you, pardon, friends. It's I'm sorry about you. changing the microphone. <laughs> it's bless you. Uh, it's so funny. There's been a lot of really sort of mediocre looking movies come out recently, according to <laughs> <laughs> like this little thing. It's been mostly, it's like pretty much all three star films. A couple of four star films, because there, <gasps> there were already few, there was already a few. The only five star film that came out is that's coming out is Tragedy and Macbeth. Which, you know, oh, nice, yes. <laughs> With Denzel Washington, isn't it? Mm. Oh, there you go. If Yes, I think that's right. Anyway, you know, where is it? He says, looking through. Yes. Yes, you're right. Oh, that's right. It's because it's, it's a, it's a Coen brother movie. Just the one. A Coen brother. That's the one. Yes. I feel like I've seen so many adapt- adaptations of Macbeth coming out. Yeah, I mean, like in the past couple of years. It's yeah. like, we do a different one? <laughs> Hamlet, maybe? I'd like to see Hamlet. I know I've actually watched Hamlet. I, would I, study, love... I didn't end up studying it, so I would like to. I would love to see A Midsummer Night Dream, which is my favourite one. So I play That would Park. be nice as well. I'd love to see that. I would love to play I Park. Am, if... I haven't seen Midsummer's 
either. I haven't really seen it. I mean, I we studied Macbeth um, yes. in for my GCSEs, and then mm. but then when we did Shakespeare in for my A levels, it was much to do about nothing. And I'm not going to lie to you. <gasps> That's why I, I hated favorite. it. No! no, no. I'm not saying that the play is bad. It's just because in the context of what we were doing, yeah. we had to study comedy. I don't know if you've ever tried to write about why something's funny. Yeah, but no. it's not very easy. It's not. And in the way, it was just the way that it was talked. It wasn't just it was done very well. And I cannot tell you how much I hated Hero as a character. <laughs> like, fuck off, you're so annoying. No! <laughs> I love Much Ado about nothing. That's why I I mean, it's, it's, it's the thing. When we were doing it, we didn't actually get the chance to watch it at any point. <gasps> but, like, trying to read it. I'm like, I would... The, the thing is, I really want to see the, the, the version of it that... that David Tennant and Catherine Tate do because people say it's excellent and that's I'd love to see that but at no point did we ever actually get a chance to like watch it in class but have, and I have... never got the chance to so I did really badly on that unit I got D throughout the whole thing because mm. um, uh, it was what we did much ado and then we did the importance of being earnest and mm-hmm. I'm just sort of like I, I don't trying to write about comedy in literature is not it's really hard it is really hard <laughs> and it's uh... not very interesting either to be honest uh, but have have you seen it since? No. <gasps> you have to watch the Emma Thompson and Kenneth Branagh one. It's just fucking perfection. I love that movie so much. They... See the, but I, so I want to watch the... Um, the, the watch. Emma, trust the me. Table. Trust me. Watch I'm the sure Emma, it's good, but like... Emma Thompson and Kenneth Branagh just fucking but... kills it. Like, mm, I love that so much. <laughs> you can't watch David Tennant afterwards, but the original I'm one, not the, watching the... that much, much ado. I already... I'm like, it's... <laughs> Watch Emma Thompson and Kenneth Branagh. You you gotta thank me. It's fucking amazing. They are the best. Uh, uh, also, Kenneth Branagh's uh, um, <laughs> a bit summer's night dream. Thank you, thank you, Brain. Uh, is the best one out there. I get. Yeah, I feel that there's there's a part of me that feels a little bit weird about watching Emma Thompson and Kenneth Branagh being in that kind of considering what he did to her. Do you not know this story? No, because they were together and he cheated on her. And that's why that's why her performance in Love Actually is the way it is because he was she was drawing on the fact that she got cheated on by Ken Branagh. Oh, I did not know that. Yeah, yeah, but that was after after those two movies. So fucking watch. It. <laughs> <laughs> Look, they are fucking. They are really. They were part of my childhood. I love those movies very dearly, and I think they are brilliant, brilliant. Like Emma Thompson is only in um, Much Ado About Nothing. I mean, Emma Thompson's brilliant every day. Uh, Emma Thompson is fucking brilliant. Uh, she plays Beatrix as, as my... Yeah, I mean, I fan. guess that, because nobody... <laughs> I know. Uh, oh, but, that's uh... so boring. <laughs> Who's the fucking name? I don't even remember the guy's name that she ends up with. Um. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly mm-hmm. my point. He's The both of them are so dull. I'm like, nobody cares about you two. <laughs> Um, okay, before I say what else I watched, <clears throat> yeah, Katie, oh yes, <laughs> I'm I'm afraid for the calendar. Its days are numbered. Shit. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's so good. I That's have another good. one. I have another one. Okay. <laughs> Katie. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> I, I only know 25 letters of the alphabet okay which one isn't isn't there i don't know why okay <laughs> it's so good ah you never share my laugh it's so sad don't deserve my dad jokes <laughs> I will tell them anyway but um, yes uh, I also watched what did I watch the fuck did I watch wait it was I told a- you this week has been like a sinkhole <laughs> it's been uh, wait I binge watched uh, Camp Cretaceous on Friday mm-hmm. I don't think I watched anything on Saturday or Sunday did I did I watch anything on Saturday or Sunday I don't think I did I'm I'm, I'm, gonna, I'm actually curious now. I'm gonna go poke my Netflix and see if I, I... that's fair uh, I don't think I did um and then I was like, oh, I should be watching something. So I watched Arkin, which completely yeah. sucked me in. Fucking Told amazing. you it was good. It was fucking good. Um, and, oh, yes. Um, this morning, uh, I have to go to work at 10. 
so that means that I, I I just have the right amount of time to watch Hawkeye, the new episode, every, every time no. because it comes out at nine uh, here. Um, so much time. <laughs> he's. I'm I'll not get gonna, to it. I'm not going to lie. Uh, the previous episodes, so episode three and this one are easily the winners so far. Um, this one especially, like, it was so heartfelt. Uh, and there is this one very specific scene in there. I don't want to spoil it for Katie. Uh, but uh, I, I will say that it's the living room scene. And mm-hmm. uh, Clint talks about the shot that he didn't take. And I'm not kidding. I was sitting there watching that scene and I didn't even realize that I was crying at first <laughs> and that I it was, why, is, why is my face like yes I, I was like oh, oh shit uh, oh, I had my makeup on and everything and I was like oh, oh, oh shit I'm crying no 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 so I had to be like the women in, in the TV like oh. <laughs> uh, but yeah it was uh, my eyes were leaking very heavily but very it was just the scene itself uh the performance uh, uh by Jeremy Renner and and uh Haley Steinfeld in it is just everything was so beautifully done in there that i just i couldn't stop not even at the end i was like <laughs> oh, um beautiful episode beautiful episode. i can i cannot wait to see the conclusion because there's only two episodes left which is a bit sad but, it's uh, six episode one six episodes yeah, yeah. i don't i my i didn't want to get my other hand up but uh, like... yeah they, they, they got you uh, it is six episodes so there's uh, two more uh next week on spider-man week uh and then the week after <gasps> jesus yeah it's spider-man week next week yeah next week keep forgetting Spider-Man that week. yeah and it's your birthday next fuck i have to get you a birthday present <laughs> i have been thinking about this i just haven't done anything about it yet I, I already know what I've, I've honestly <laughs> gone. I've been thinking about this for months. I just haven't done anything about it yet. <laughs> but I haven't done anything about anybody. <laughs> it's Harry's birthday next week as well. I haven't done anything yet. Either. Okay. <laughs> oh, I've been in in uh, Christmas gift shopping mode. In... I do. Need, I need to do a bunch. Of gift I, I already know what you're gonna get, so I'm like. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You can, uh, no, I've got I've got a couple of things in mind. I just I feel like I need some I need something else. But I also need to think of, I need to get some stuff for my best friends and I need my family to get the shit together and start sending out Christmas games. I'm the only one who's put forward a Christmas list so far, is all I'm saying. So Yeah, because you guys do the Christmas list thing. Yeah, we do That's Christmas. so weird. That's so weird for me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, send it to me as no, well, here's actually. The thing. No, but here's the thing. I, the, the Christmas list that I send to my family is the one that, I don't send it to anybody else because I don't want anybody to be, I don't want okay. to be any repeats. Okay. So I tend to just sort of give people ideas for everybody else. So I've been just sort of like putting down like um, <laughs> suggestions to my friends. Like, hey, these look nice. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I do have two things in mind for you for Christmas. Uh, I will probably get both Ramesh? of them. If we eat you, uh, I will probably get both of them if I'm completely honest. Uh, but I am a bit afraid of one of them that you might get it from someone else as well. Ah, so you might have to show me that Christmas list that you wrote just to make okay. sure that you didn't put it in there. Because I will if you... say all my Christmas list, my Christmas list that I've sent to my family is basically all books. Okay, yeah, then definitely send it to me, please. Okay. <laughs> okay. Uh, anyway, Christmas talk. Um... <laughs> Remember, why wouldn't we? <laughs> yes. um, it's uh, beginning to look a lot like Christmas. I have not filled, but my parents bought the Christmas tree today. <gasps> ah! I need a So that will be very fun. When, we, when that goes up, it will be nice. But we tend to, it's been a bit different in, in recent years because, you know, he's old enough now, but we try it. We used to not put it up before Harry's birthday. Okay. Because um, so it's like he, he has a bit of a priority over Christmas. Uh, but it, so I'm used to my the Christmas tree not being up until like not very long before Christmas. Mm-hmm. So for me at the moment, I'm just sort of like, hmm. It's 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 it, everywhere. It's December, but I'm not getting Christmas yet. Oh, thank you, Twitter. That does remind me. I've been watching Succession every week. Oh yeah, you've been. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Holy fucking balls, man! <laughs> <laughs> right, it's been kind of like the slow build this season. That's been kind of going up and down. It, there were bits of it where it's because like, it's week to week. There's a part to me though where, where I'm watching some episodes. Like, like I feel like we haven't really moved anywhere. Mm. All the characters seem to be kind of in the same place. This week and last week. Fucking hell. Um, (laughs) (laughs) 
It's been good, I'm guessing. I mean, yeah, but like some of the, oh my God, like one of the things that happened this week, like I was sitting, I was watching it downstairs um, and one of the things that happened actively made me like grab the sides of my dressing gown and just sort of hide inside and just like, no, I can't actually look at this anymore. Oh, (laughs) no. Oh, it was like, you can't, I can't even express how like, it was bad. (laughs) Oh, no. (laughs) Because then that happened, and then the end of the episode happened, which was a bit like it, that was like, that was like oh my gosh, but like oh. the thing that happened, oh my, a certain text message got sent to the wrong person. Okay, it was it was real bad. Oh no. Oh no. Okay, I still have to watch Succession. I have no idea uh, how to oh, react. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the, the, the thing that people have, most people have been talking about is there was this, there was this profile done in the New York Times. I actually don't remember what. Um, hang on, I probably find out to be honest. It was New Yorker, and it was something you know to do with New York. Um, in the New Yorker with um, Jeremy Strong, mm. and it paints him as a very. He seems like a very weird guy, <laughs> like super method acting. No, Ooh. that can and be it's, it's, it's good or really, bad. But it's the thing of like because the character, the it, the way that people fans of Succession in it, it, like engage with Succession is in this sort of way of like nobody in this show is good. We're not really rooting for anybody. We're all kind of waiting for their failures. It's a really weird sort of like way of of watching something because everybody's just like, this is insane. Let's see what the crazy people do this week. No oh god we like crazy people yeah so it's a bit like because you know they're all rich and terrible and mm. have daddy issues up to the hills um <laughs> i'm not even kidding um so I believe they, you. but the way jeremy strong gave us the most incredible performance he died like his performance as kendall is out of this world but it's the fact that the show is funny it is a, technically speaking a dark comedy in a lot of ways and the way that Jesse Armstrong said that the reason that they cast Jeremy Strong, he didn't realize it was a comedy when he he read he read it. He's been playing it as like Hamlet. Oh, so it's like everybody else is, is kind of vaguely aware that this. He, he just it, he like Kieran Culkin said that he wasn't aware that it was meant to be funny, and it was like, oh boy, no wonder he's been like it really. It but it like really works because it's like he's playing this incredibly tortured, like. And it's not like anybody's playing like goofball or anything like that, but like lines that are meant to be funny come out as quite funny, mm. for, especially from somebody like Kieran Culkin, who's just naturally quite a, a he's a funny guy. He's he's got a lot of charisma in that sort of sense, um, and I think he's playing certain things for laughs in within the character. He's just Jeremy Strong plays it so seriously, but it almost makes some of the stuff even like he play, he he is the place of like cringe. Uh, humor it's the only thing i think i've ever seen where i've been like this is cringy but in a way that i can actually enjoy okay because i hate secondhand embarrassment i cannot I tell you, you i, I just you can't do it a lot of the time but this is different because it feels it because it is more of a drama yeah it's not it's not like i couldn't watch the office i don't think i could ever I, I, i'm never gonna yeah. i i just will not, i won't be able to get through it but this is this is something i really it's such fucking phenomenal show i can't wait because everybody's so fucked up <laughs> that's always fun isn't it it's really good oh boy i can't wait for the last episode this week <laughs> <laughs> there you go it's gonna be another year and a half of waiting to be like what the fuck yeah that's always fun waiting 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 um let's talk about this recipes behind me yes. and behind you as well mm-hmm. um Oh, just I'm so fond of her. She's so fucked up. <laughs> she is very fucked up. Although, okay, I will start immediately here because you know we could say our altogether opinion, but let's be fair and and address why Jinx is a good character, but at the same time also not a really good character. And I will explain my so, like, thing then. A good character, but a terrible person. Basically, yes. Yeah. Uh, and we shouldn't really glorify her, to be honest. 
<laughs> so well, here's the thing. I feel like when it comes to these sort of things, we just anybody we're all aware that these people are not real. My Obviously, morality yeah, yeah. in terms of a character and what I like in a character is not I'm not gonna like her in real life, am I? But I like her as because she's interesting. I get uh, really annoyed about this. That's the hope. That yeah. you know. <laughs> this is the thing. I get really annoyed about people who start like getting really annoyed about moralizing on um actual on characters and like there's i feel like there's this sort of line it's like you and i both have uh get, get very uncomfortable with the way that people romanticize dark thing in in, in shadow and bone mm. right and yeah uh, I, I feel like there's this sort of line of like for me in particular there's like certain character things that i will just never get on board with yeah just well i will never um, it, it, it's like it's not it's something I don't like as a moral thing, it's something I don't like as a character thing. Yeah. Characters that are going to go around murdering and, and blowing things up and stuff, I'm it, I'm not. Why, why why would you bother putting morals on that? It's a story. These people are not real, <laughs> right? Yes. But like I don't, I get I get uncomfortable when people start romanticizing characters like the Darkling, who are actively like abusive in a way that is like gendered and. Um, uh, I've, I'm trying to avoid using certain words in, 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 in you know this this setting, but like he's, he's he's awful to the women in his life, and that really bug and it bugs me in a way that people who romanticize him seem to actively ignore those things. Yeah, because I'm I'm I'm, I'm all on board with people being like I love the Dark Moon's character. I'm like sure, yeah, 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 yeah he's yeah. a great character. He's, he's... Fucked up in about a thousand and one ways, but like he's a great character. But it's like it's the way that people, yeah, the romanticization of it is the way that it gets 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 my goat. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, but yeah, you know my my thing uh, with the whole character of, of Jinx and and but uh, butter. It, it for some reason it's always butter in my head. I don't know why. I know it's powder. <laughs> I know it's powder. But it butter is the first thing that comes to my mind. Don't ask me why. I have no idea. Uh, my mind is weird. Uh, but first of all, the first three episodes of is a freaking masterpiece in in yes. storytelling. Like Agreed. it's just amazing. Uh, that's how you build up your story really, really well. Uh, but I think one thing that's very important there that. She does fuck up. Like, oh, yeah, she fucks up big time. Big fucking time. She and, really fucks up. Yeah. But then so does Vi, technically so, speaking. Yes. Okay. I, okay. I will say that, yes, Vi fucks up in that moment. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, I would have done the same. I would have fucking shaken like, her. I, and... It's so, it, like, the emotional reaction she had is so understandable. Very understandable. Um, it's so understandable. I like, but that's what I kind of one of the things I really liked about that whole bit was mm. that it was like, because because it's one of those storytelling things where you've seen both perspectives at the same time. Yeah, 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 yeah. You have the outside perspective of being like, oh, you two are like, this is going to break the two of you, but mm. I know the whole truth. So, of course, you're both going to react the way that you do. Um, because it like powder is already kind of screwed up at that point. She's she's consistently uh, been screwed up. I don't necessarily agree with that completely. Because I don't think that that is a clear point in the first three episodes. Like, you know, she's a bit I think yeah, she's I don't think she is she just she's not this version of screwed up. She's yeah, still, yeah, yeah. she's a version of screwed up. It's just like she's on that edge of like something has to happen and she's gonna go one way or the other. And it happened to be the way she goes you know i don't know if i've seen it in the first three episodes i'm not gonna lie like i i i don't think no, it was... i saw it coming yeah i don't know i don't know it's it, it was a... ah i don't know but but altogether i i think that wise reaction was completely the same reaction that i would have had uh even though you know i saw obviously you saw the motivation uh behind powders uh, actions like you know she wanted to help obviously she didn't think it through she didn't you know she just saw an opportunity and did it and then fucked it up big fucking time uh, but uh, afterwards like uh, you know I loved the whole how this will turn out uh, at, at the end I was like hmm very interesting uh, I, I loved the good fucked up uh, dead end daughter <laughs> figure 
Are you talking Silco and Silco and and and, and Jinx, I yeah. did like that. I I I really liked that. I'm not gonna lie. I'm gonna just stress now that I think we're gonna go into like big store of the territory. So if you haven't watched it yet, you should. It's not very long. Um, it's all on Netflix. Yep, and it's really good. <laughs> it's very good. Um, but but uh, and then Jinx comes in obviously. Um, um, and I love the character. I honestly think it's it's brilliant. What I don't like is the same thing that we saw with the Darkling. <laughs> okay. <laughs> like I've 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 seen that like I I literally muted it on Twitter. I'm not gonna lie. I was like, Boop. I don't care. I don't. I actually really haven't really watched, looked at any reaction to it, so it's kind of yeah. like. It was weird. Like, you know, I get it. It's a very good character. I, I love the good fucked up character. I love the Joker. Like, come on. I, I love got a lot of Joker vibes. Yeah, she does. Uh, let, let's let not put it on a fucking pedestal and look at it as the things that she does is awesome. It's not. She's fucked up. She's a fucking murderer at this point. Like, you know, she just doesn't yeah, care. Yeah, like, yeah, just, when people are just uh, sort of you, you guys but, are going a bit over the board. That's what I'm saying. It's like, I mean, yeah, you don't want to look at. Fan Twitter is always overboard, and it's weird, and and it's, you don't want to look so at weird. it. Just don't it's, look at it. I know, I know. I I muted it. I was like, oh, I can't. <laughs> Never look at it. Nope. No, not again. Not again. But she's a great character. She's a very good character. I I really enjoyed James. I love her. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I do I really love? Her. Yeah. I and love the design of her. I'm like, it's very great. good design. So yeah. great. Very, very good design. I feel like we should clarify as well that we're both people who have not played. And I mean, I'm oh, assuming. No, 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 no. no, I am. I don't know anything about League of Legends. I don't really want to either. No, um, don't really care. I've heard. I've heard certain like. I know Riot Games have, has got a lot of mm-hmm. controversies in, in its own background, so it's a bit sort of like. I get that's where I I I, I get a bit, mm. but also. I, 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 we're looking at this as fully as its own piece of like media. Yes, I think, and yes. I think yeah, that's. Yeah, I think yeah. the fact that they managed to make something like that, that, this so accessible for those of us who have no idea about anything mm. to do with League of Legends, and then all the people who go into it, and the, both sides I've seen have been really happy about it. Yeah, and I was talking to my brother about this actually. He he was very impressed with it as well. What the thing I liked about this, and I think it, I, it was the fact that I watched this in stark contrast to the way the thing, all the things I didn't like about Netflix's Cowboy Bebop, mm. is that no, this doesn't spell out like it no, doesn't I'm... it doesn't really expo- exposit all the things you need mm. to know about the world to you. It mm-hmm. just kind of lets everything exist and let a, you figure brief, things out. Yeah. Dream, yeah, and it's like it really allows the audience to just be like, okay, I've seen things like this before. I can understand what like mm-hmm. X points it is from context. I um it, one of the things that really stood out to me was the um uh, the the dialogue and uh, the, the the creation of dialogue in the show is actually gorgeous as well. Mm-hmm. It's really sort of it's nice to listen to, which is always something I I very much appreciate. Um, but the um it was the that Silco had a, a monologue at the beginning of one of the episodes when you kind of start finding out. I think it's during that first three. Uh, I think uh, it's it's, it's the, a third episode, I think. Yeah, I think well, it's second a, or third. It's one of those two. I mean, but it was like I remember it popping up and being like, "Oh, this is good dialogue." It is very like, good. This is what that sounds like. I've forgotten. It sounds it's good when it's good. Yeah. you can just tell when you hear it. Um, I really liked Silco as, as a sort of villain. Oh, I will I say that I was Silco. very disappointed the fact that they killed him by the end of the I season. Know. I know. I, <laughs> I was like, oh, come on, but he was so good. And when you told me that, you know, the very good villain dies in the last week, I was like, oh, no, Silco's going to die. I was like, no. Was I was great. really disappointed. Very I really liked him. Yeah, me too. I like. Hmm. I don't know. He was great. I liked, I liked, I mean, that's the thing. I really liked everybody, everybody in it. I, I was expecting certain characters to to turn i guess um like in it it's sort okay. of like go from good to evil you know in, in a way that i would like victor i thought was gonna go nuts same and then he didn't yep I, I think was like, oh okay i'm not against this because i really like victor i like victor i think his saving grace was uh was the girl whose name i forgot yeah. who's uh, oh yeah. the lab the, yeah. the sort of assistant the, the, the assistant girl i was like that was heartbreaking Oh, no, that scene was like, oh no, you're not gonna do this. Like this show, that's the other thing. This show does not take any prisoners. It's just like dead. 
yeah. gone, dead. Gone. Nobody yeah. <laughs> survives. I mean, I, I I knew that it wasn't uh, obviously just because it's animation. It doesn't mean that it's a kid show. Uh, just FYI, those who didn't know. But like, you know, there was a sex scene and everything, which is beautifully done. It was beautifully done. Beautifully done. Yeah. Um, really, really liked uh, everything about it. But, uh, you know, they killing people here and there. And I was like, oh, shit. This show just doesn't mess around. <laughs> mm, 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 mm. Uh, but I really liked, like, I will mention that I really liked the voice guest. Mm. Very good. I feel like I spent most of my time watching these episodes, uh, along with watching them, just like p- consistently re pulling up the IMDb. But I Same. can't see anything. That you, I'm I just know. being like, who is this character? <laughs> the guy Wait. who does the voice of, of, of the, the, <laughs> the, um, the, the, I can't remember what they're fucking called now, the police people um oh my god and That's... he was like he was so familiar like the guy the guy was kind of like working both sides yes um, Ma- marcus like, yeah marcus he had such a familiar voice and then i looked him up and i was like this guy hasn't actually really been in anything i don't i wonder why his voice is so familiar my my favorite person uh, uh oh god i can't i can't say her name properly i am so sorry shohre agdashlo who was the chief uh, uh, sheriff at the beginning, Grayson. Oh yeah, I mean she she's got the most she's got the most recognizable voice Just... in anything ever, but it's so nice. Mm, I love her voice so much. So when that character started to talk, I was like, I was like, it's her, it's her, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Whenever she shows up, I just become so happy. I'm like, yes. And then yeah. she fucking died, and I was like, oh, yeah, that was. And she died so fast as well. So like... fast, I was like, fuck. <laughs> I should have seen it coming, but I didn't. Oh, Damn I was it. so disappointed. I I really uh, 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 loved um, Echo. Yeah. F- oh my god, oh, they, their uh, episode start, um, the boy savior. Yeah, is is one of my favorite starts. I'm not gonna lie. Like, oh, and I I will say it here before I forget. The music in this is just fucking amazing. <laughs> like, yes, the music is great. And I I mean I I was, I I haven't listened to Imagine Dragons properly in ages. But like, I didn't skip <sighs> the intro once never. because the the song was really good. Yep. I will say the only thing I didn't like about the entire show was the really ham fisted in like animated Imagine Dragons bit. Where they had the band in the that show. Was a, that was, was a bit like, weird, oh, yeah. guys, no. That was a bit weird. But I, I didn't mind it as much. But I was, even I went like... Mm, I, I was a bit like, I... oh, this is this is the only... Because it really like shunted me out of the moment yeah, like, yeah, immediately. Yeah. I was like, ah, oh, guys, why did you do this? It, <laughs> but to be fair, it only lasted for like three it seconds. It wasn't very so long. It, it wasn't it very was, long. It was a bit sort of like... It was no. a bit weird. It was a bit weird, yeah. But uh, it... It's for a really good scene, though. It's like I really like that scene because that's where it's Vi just is before just... Vi goes in and like beats everybody up. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah, yeah. I really liked it. I was like, <laughs> this is good. Actually, uh, it's a good point. It is something that I saw somebody mention that she is part of the reason why I really like another one of the many things that I really like about this. Is the there is a a really nice variety of body types. Yes, in this show, very, nobody looks like nice. perfect. There's like. There's like gaps between teeth and like scars on faces, and like people have like uh, people are larger and the the it's, 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 yeah. there's a there's, I mean there's one great bit with um, Vi and Caitlin going to present all their stuff to the council, mm-hmm. and there's like a shot from behind, and Vi is like she's really like broad shouldered, yeah, yeah, yeah. and, and then Caitlin's there like so thin, and it's like this is this is really interesting and cool, and all the facial stuff is so stunningly done, like really Very stunning, yeah really sort of minute sort of facial like tics and all this sort of stuff my favorite honestly being like within those first three episodes when when she's like telling off i think it's milo, milo and yeah, she does yeah. like, yeah. <laughs> like that was <laughs> so gorgeous good to look at i'm like oh god i love this so much and i think it was you who pointed it out that it it looks the animation looks a lot like uh into the spider verse it's got that vibe it it, it definitely uh got that vibe i really like the animation i'm not good like i even wrote it to you that it i it i took a long break from drawing i really needed it my head definitely is very grateful for that <laughs> um, yeah, <I'm> so <laughs> uh but uh this 
will bring me back because I really want to draw them. Uh, and I, I haven't done any color art in a while, so this is going to be a good uh, comeback to it uh, because the characters are fucking amazing and I want to draw all of them, to be honest. Uh, uh, and I will do it digitally, so I can practice that as well. Very good. I love that. Why the hell not? Uh, it is digital, after all, so, you know. Mm. Yes, uh, I mean, I, I, I just love how everything looks very painted and all this sort of... Mm. <sighs> so pretty it's very pretty very, very pretty. i will say because i was talking about this with a friend he was the one who kind of suggested that i watch it mm. um and he was saying that and i think i agree with him the first three episodes that kind of three act because it's done it's it, it like, the whole good. show is done in three acts yes um because it because it came out like one week after the other it was three episodes, yeah, yeah, yeah. Three, episodes three episodes i will say that i think the first episode is phenomenally put together it loses it a little bit by the last couple i think the last couple are not quite as tight as that first three episodes oh, and yeah, i'm not yeah, saying yeah. it's bad or anything i just no, think no, it, no. it's not quite as as tightly wound as mm-hmm, as mm-hmm. The, that but because i think it really came out the gate strong with those first three episodes but i think the last three aren't as good or like it, even in it, like the the second second act and the third act i don't think are quite as tight as those mm-hmm. that first act but they are, they are still really good but they are still great i mean yeah. I, it, that's just like I just mean that it's not quite as they it Look, doesn't feel yeah. quite as, as well rounded as that as that first that first three right. is just freaking masterpiece. Yeah. That's be fair. Like they did it beautifully. I was freaking blown away by all of it. So I'm like Yeah, that's that's how you do it. That's how you introduce your characters, that's how you do an origin mm-hmm. story to not just your villain character because let's be fair jinx becomes the villain of the story by the end uh but but you're basically hero as well and i think the fact that they are uh sisters is just making it even more interesting and intriguing and mm-hmm. i love that uh, uh there's this scene in episode four where um she thinks that uh, the girl who has pink hair is is her sister and yeah. immediately goes like berserk and just fucking shots everyone. Uh, but, uh, you know, I'm, I'm glad did. that when they... <laughs> shit it, yes, jinx. Uh, uh, when they uh, do actually meet, uh, finally, it we, we, we get powder back. And, and it's really nice because there are multiple moments where you can see powder come back through. Yeah. And it's like in that lot, especially in that last episode at the sort of dinner table scene, you see her die. It's really fascinating. It's like literally it in the facial animation, you see her like literally killed off in an instant. Yeah. Because she's like, the powder is like there in that last moment after she realizes she killed is, um, Silco. And then she kind of looks down and then kind of goes a bit, it, like in the animation, they managed to make her look naked. Yeah. And I was like, fuck. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. 100% and I love that like I love that scene and I hated that scene at the same time <laughs> which is very confusing feeling like I obviously I do love it a lot but uh, uh I kind of wanted her <laughs> to be good <laughs> yeah well that was I think that's the thing uh, the only thing I do know about League of Legends is that she is kind of like the main oh, yeah, yeah, antagonist yeah yeah yeah, yeah. She, and her and her and Vi have like this they, the when I looked it up it was like arch enemies was the way it was described so i was like well this is inevitable <laughs> yeah i didn't look it up or anything i but yeah no obviously it's it's a bit, a bit it makes me a bit sad like i'm not gonna lie I, uh because i really like their dynamics uh at the at, in the first three episodes like you know it's it, i think it was beautifully illustrated and everyone know but uh yeah i was kind of hoping for a bit of a better ending for her and then she fucking looks like she fucking kills the consul right when they uh, <laughs> they blow them all up. <laughs> yep, right when they decide that uh, they're gonna make peace with Silco and and uh, the Undercity. And I was like, ah, oh, you're doing it again. You're, do- you're doing the same thing again. You're fucking things up. Um, but uh, what I loved in that ending, and again, I will point at the music because I just tweeted about this. It sounded familiar, but I couldn't put the voice anywhere suddenly. But mm. the last song is performed by fucking Sting, who's oh, wow. a legend. And that yes, we know song... Sting's a legend. Yes. <laughs> it's, that... Sting. <laughs> it's Sting. It's <laughs> Sting. Uh, that song is fucking beautiful. I think it's masterfully fit in there. And, and it just made the scene 
1000 percent more heartbreaking for me like you know the, it's the monster you created that's how it starts and i'm like oh you really want to kill me here right and just i uh, really i get actually speaking of i really like the fact that they made an effort to have um jinx be like hey i know you think to buy to be like, i know you think that he created me through all of his like monologues but you did this mm-hmm. you you did this to me uh, you were the it was it was your words and your actions that sent me down this path. It's like, yep, we all knew it. We we all saw it in that instant. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's it, yeah, it really is that sort of terrible moment where she's like leaves in a in a moment of heartbreak and then doesn't come back, not through her own like actions, but because fucking Marcus. Fucking Marcus. <laughs> fucking Marcus. <laughs> what the fuck is that about? Anyway. But yeah. Um, it, it it was uh, you know the characters were great. Uh, I really I okay. Here's one thing. Uh, I really like. I don't remember names again. What a surprise! Mel's character, the council woman. Mel. Yes, yes. There you go. Uh, uh, her. <laughs> yes. Right uh, behind you. That, yes, right I, behind yeah, me. She's yes. gorgeous. Uh, she's gorgeous. First of all. Um. Uh, but uh, I couldn't place her at first like if for me it felt like that maybe she was going down on a yeah she was again another sort of like up on on the line of like you could go either way i really don't know what to feel about yes yeah, yeah yeah exactly so i was very confused because first of all it felt like that uh everything uh she did with jace was was Animated a power move. Yeah, yeah 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 uh and and then i was like oh she might really be feeling something for him wait what what like what's happened i i it took me so long to place her like okay where you stand yeah and and i think you know that's th- th- i think that was actually very good like it wasn't obvious like you know what what are we doing with this character i really really like her character by the way it's just mal is just great um also i will point out because i was very surprised but uh caitlin uh on my other side uh her voice is katie long who's uh who played cho chang in in the harry potter movies i knew her name was familiar yep <laughs> i didn't i like i kept saying it i was like uh, I, I didn't follow through which is stupid yeah. but like i saw the name and like that seems familiar and then didn't didn't click further um <laughs> The really funny is that I thought her voice was really familiar, but she's not actually done a whole lot of stuff. No, no, she didn't. She didn't. Which is, uh, she really sounds like somebody, and I mm. haven't figured out who it is yet. I don't I'll know either, that. but I, I, but, like, I, she's got the, I don't know, the tone to it. It sounds really sort of familiar to me. I can't yeah, yeah, yeah. What it's reminding, I don't know who it's reminding me of. Me neither. But it's, it, I, I know what you mean because I was like, oh, mm. and then I checked. Her, her performance like, was fucking phenomenal. Hmm? Really was like I think she's got one of my favorite performances in the entire thing. She was very good. Haley Steinfeld who plays obviously uh, this Haley Steinfeld who does great and everything. Very good, very. But I think altogether everyone was really great. Harry Lloyd played Victor. Uh, Harry Lloyd was also in Game of Thrones, <laughs> the first season. The guy who played Jace was um the uh was oh, fucking hell. He's in Lucifer. I will thing. check. Uh, um, Kevin he's, he's, Alejandro. He's, yeah, I'm trying to remember his character's name in Lucifer. Uh, Detective uh, Dan. Detective it. Dan. Detective. He was Detective Dan. Um, I, I was because I was like, oh, he's very, he's very familiar as well. But like, he wasn't. I, I kept thinking I was going to hear the only like voice actor, voice actor that I, I, I placed was um, uh, Yuri Lowenthal, who does yeah. the voice of Milo. Milo I was like, yeah, oh, yeah. Oh, there he is. I knew there he is. <laughs> uh, also, Josh Keaton uh, was in it. I don't know that. Uh, he played Salo. Uh, oh, I don't even know whose character was that. Uh, uh, it was, there was somebody else that I looked up. Shit. Wait, I'm I'm checking. I'm checking. I'm here. Uh, so annoying. Oh no, the, the 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 lab assistant had a really familiar voice, and I yes. looked it up, and she's in a game. I can't remember who she played. Now <laughs> was it Sky? The character name that might yes I think hang on okay because um, I have Kimberly here that was Sky, Sky's voice and I think yeah. Kimberly is Ashley in in Mass Effect I'm not sure that's it that was it there you go okay then we we were thinking about this yeah, so yeah, it's yeah. it's uh it's Kimberly uh shit Kimberly Brooks because she had the it was one of the it was because it's like it was clearly like her voice yeah yeah yeah, yeah. Uh, instead of like you know trying to do another voice it was like it, 
I, I but it was like immediately I was like, mm, yeah, that's a really yeah. familiar voice, and it's because I have yeah, was, that's it's Ashley. She is Ashley. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, yeah. I hear it specifically now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, but yeah, uh, to my big surprise, I love Miyavi, who is uh, is a singer and an actor as well. And uh, he was the voice of Finn. And he is uh, the performer of one of the songs uh, in, in the series as well. So I'm like, oh, Who's good. Finn? Finn was... Um... I will tell you in a second. I have to see the character to tell you completely. To be... okay. um... Finn. One second. Um, I, I, oh, I didn't look up. I'm, I'm... Is it Heim? Um, is uh, it Finn, Finn was the one with the golden underbite here uh the the other gang ga- gang boss bonk boss gang that's finn that's finn and and his voice was miyavi so i'm like mm, i love miyavi uh it's great uh you've seen miyavi in um engine and julie's uh unbroken uh movie uh, i have seen uh, he was also in Maleficent, Mistress of Evil. Uh, oh, that's... I, wait, was that the first or the second one? Second one. I haven't seen the second one. I've seen the first one. <laughs> Fine, I give up. <laughs> Listen, but, not all of us have seen Angelina Jolie's entire movie catalogue. I don't know what you're <laughs> insinuating here. <laughs> I'm saying you've seen Angelina Jolie's entire movie catalogue. <laughs> yes, I did. <laughs> uh, but yes, it... Okay, so, all together... I fucking loved it. I don't know shit about League of Legends. And still, it was it's very understandable. Uh, very clear. Like, you know, I love that they didn't put everything in, in our head. Like, you know, this is that and that is that. And, and you know, you should know about this. But it, it became clear as we were watching it. And, and I love that. I, I, I love when uh, they do that. Um, so, you know, watch it. It's very much worth it <laughs> that's the message i am trying to put through it oh so unbelievably good it is very good um yeah and it's beautifully animated so ella Purnell, right that's that's who did the voice of of jinx yeah she was the world of yeah. jinx so what has she been in again after i was looking at this before and i didn't actually because she's been in a bunch of i was check as well wait she was in like stuff she was like in live action stuff but nothing nothing i'd seen which is the very confusing yeah i don't know it's very odd she was in army of the dead though is recently she? yeah oh wait. Kate ward i don't know if that means anything to you ah shit okay my i am still recording crazy. I... <laughs> I just threw my phone down on uh my keyboard and it stopped the recording oh no it's okay, I'm still recording. You're still recording. Well, you can get up to that point. Hang on, I'll just start recording again so you can have that half of my... <laughs> oh, well. Oh, I... Oh, yeah. <laughs> you want to try that again? <laughs> so good. I'm good. Um, yes, uh, she played the daughter of uh, Dave Batista's character, Scott Ward, in, in Army ah, of the Dead. There you go. Uh, so, yeah, that because her face was so familiar, but uh, I didn't check the filmography, so I was like, oh. I wish I could figure out whose voice she's, it, what her, who her voice reminds me of. Yeah. Because it's like, it's, it's um, such, it got such a quality to it that I'm like, that has to be somebody. It's so similar to somebody else, and I can't think of what it is. Oh, she played uh, Young Maleficent as well. Teen <laughs> Maleficent, that's how it's written. There you go. She was in Maleficent as well. Where's Angelina Jolie from this guy's Dan? <laughs> is he doing other things? <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. Uh, but yeah. Okay. Well, she's younger than me. Fuck you, Dan. Why are you <laughs> leaving my dream? <laughs> uh, yes. But uh, yeah, that's. I, I think that's all my thoughts. Uh mm. I, I will say that Mel's mom is another piece of excellent like character design though. A very good character design, but her character is very questionable. I mean, yeah, that's kind of the, that's the whole point of everybody in this. I though. mean, yes, obviously, <laughs> but like especially with her, I was like, how old is that boy? <laughs> I need clarification. I honestly don't know if that person had a particular gender because they feel very sort of okay that's oh that's true 
I didn't even I think don't about know. that. You don't know. Uh, it's embarrassing. Fair, I don't even fair. know. But still, how old? <laughs> of age, I would say. I sure hope so. <laughs> Otherwise, it's very because no, if I don't fe- think I think I don't think they would have done that. If, the if felt a bit wrong, I was like, "This is weirding me out so much." I'm like, I don't like this. <laughs> it felt weird. I don't know. I don't know. Um, okay, I have a question. Oh, okay. Okay. Do you know Maya He? No. <laughs> no, I'm saying ask back. No, I know exactly where this is going and I'm not doing it. <laughs> no, you need to ask back. Do you know Maya He? No. No! We're not doing this. <laughs> okay, then. Why didn't the T Rex clap? A little arm. Because it's dead! <laughs> <laughs> I was like, I will put in a Meet the Robinson. No, it was Meet the Robinson. I was like, is that the one in him? Yeah, Meet the Robinson reference here. Yeah. Yeah, big head and little arms. Because it's dead. I'm just not sure that this it, I, uh, it, <laughs> this finally pulled through. <laughs> reminds me of the um, interview that Jake Gyllenhaal and, and Tom Holland did. <laughs> Jake Gyllenhaal. No, it was Tom Holland. Tom Holland literally went like, uh, blah, little arms. Blah. Or was it Jake? I think it was Jake. No, I no, I think this is this not the um when they had oh, no, to figure that, out who they are impersonating. Yeah, no, that's that that was Jake Gyllenhaal. I, it was Jake. Was, yeah, there, I have there was a, um, a Nerd <laughs> HQ panel that Tom Hiddleston did where he did impersonate a Velociraptor. Have you not? Oh yeah, this? yeah, 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 that, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> I was like, wait, what? you may be getting those two things confused. <laughs> but yeah, 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 yeah. It was Jake. It was Jake. Oh, let it up. <laughs> Is that the same one where he has the the little avocado with the in, insane face? I think so. <laughs> <laughs> oh god, I love this too. Uh, yes, but anyway, um, yeah, I think that's uh, let's let's wrap up uh, this episode into a nice blanket, um, hmm. and um, you know, uh, next time we will. Hopefully, we were supposed to have someone um, on this week's episode. But th- it seems like we've had a bit of a communication issue. Something um, happened. Hopefully, yes. <laughs> we'll have them next week. That's yes. That's the Fingers plan. Fingers crossed. Fingers crossed. If it happens after my birthday, it's a birthday gift. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I will take it as then. <laughs> uh, but uh, let's hope uh, that next week that's going to happen. Uh, so sorry that I teased you guys. Uh, I won't stop. We're doing still, it. like, it's, it's, it, we'll, we'll, we'll figure it out. There will be much. We'll be more diligent and make sure once as soon as we get back in contact with them. Yes, uh, we'll, we'll, we'll get it. Yes, I promise. Uh, and then uh, afterwards, uh, we're going to have a big Spider-Man talk. I feel like. I think because uh, the week after next is technically speaking Christmas. We'll probably do a Spider-Man episode in the mid, maybe take a, I don't know, it, we'll have to talk about this because it's like, literally there's next week and then there's the week of Christmas. So we could do one just before Christmas and then yes. and then we'll probably take the rest of the year off. I imagine that probably sounds like a fair, fair enough deal, right? I don't know, does it? <laughs> uh, I don't know, do, do, over the week of, uh, after Christmas, I feel like nobody does anything in the mid- I mean, it could come out on the twenty third, the Spider Man episode. That's the that's what I'm saying. Well, that's fine. It's just then, and then the week after for us, oh, okay. we take a week off. Oh, but yeah, we don't we, come we... back with a new episode until the new year comes out. That's fair. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's probably what we're gonna do. So our last episode is gonna be Spider Man. We'll do that, and I'll probably talk a little because I know you probably won't have to watch it, but I'll talk a little bit about the new season of The Witcher because I'm so I'm just so excited. And I'm genuinely like after we finished our, our episode last week, I forgot, um, and um, they did the premiere, mm. oh, and I was like, <laughs> I'm getting, I'm getting, I'm getting teased on so much Yaskia stuff. I'm so excited. I did start it to watch it again. I forgot to say that. I, you, I mean, I gathered that from the fact that you, you <laughs> said that you liked Yaskia, and I told you that he's really the only. He's. <laughs> The only thing that is it's one I love him so much. Yes, Kier is great. That's all I'm saying. I still haven't changed my mind too much. I'm not gonna lie. I reckon, and I don't know because obviously I haven't seen the new season yet. But I reckon 
that a lot of the stuff that because I think not, not I don't think everybody was a big fan of the way that they did the first season. Hmm. I think the second season might be more people's speeds because I know I've been talking to a lot of people who don't like the way that Henry does Geralt because he's so uncommunicative and 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 sort of closed off and all this sort of stuff and they like the version of Geralt that talks a lot mm. and is very friendly I think we're getting that I think the idea is that they are going to be getting that in season two plus Vesemir and all of the the boys the the other witches are going to be coming in and Vesemir then. Vesemir is being played by Kim uh, I can't remember, Bodina he did he's um he was in um Killing Eve as like Eve's oh. not Eve's um uh, Vill- Villanelle's like sort of father yes. figure sort of thing yeah. and he's been so sweet throughout the entire everybody seems to be very much in love with him <laughs> he's so like enthusiastic about oh man it, it, apparently he's done a very good job as the Vesemir according to everybody on set nobody's really seen the show yet I mean apart from the people who watched the premiere but like yeah. I, I haven't seen really any sort of audience reaction I think they've been keeping it very quiet I think next week is going to be a lot of press content which will feed me possibly <laughs> specifically this is coming out next week so yes but like they've been teasing all the press conference and i'm like where are the interviews, are the interviews? Gotcha. i haven't had, i've haven't gone on like a full like press junket okay. dive in a while <laughs> i'm very excited fair fair all right um yes we're gonna talk about a lot of things uh oh my god my candle just died um <laughs> But and that's a good time to end. I, I need is. to go eat dinner. It's just, <laughs> I, I need dinner as well. I'm very hungry. My Tommy literally went like, blah, blah, blah. Um, I'm glad you didn't hear that. Uh, so, yeah, take care, guys. Uh, and we see you next time. Love you. Bye, friends. Bye.